Steve McQueen, are you? <laughs> what a great crowd. Wow. But let, let me just say this, and you will let uh, um, Steve, I want to give him the opportunity to, to express uh, his thoughts about this phenomenon, I think it is. Um, and I, uh, when I was asked to do this, I was like, wow, you know, this is incredible. And I started thinking of what I thought, and I think that was not fair because what I think may be too narrow. So I called several of my friends to ask them what would they ask Steve McQueen. You know, people who think about this stuff a lot. <laughs> there are a few of us who think about this stuff a lot. You know, about slavery and uh, what that means in terms of the question of race, of religion, of sex and sexuality, and above all, is violence. To me, slavery is a synonym for violence. It's another word, and you have that, you do that, it was sustained throughout the thing, not just covert violence, uh, but uh, the violence that is not physical, Psychologically, the assault against the human mind is what I think of slavery as, and it still goes on. No, so I want you to, uh, this is a conceptual question. I'll start with a question that one of my friends who's very involved with youth, working with youth, and he wanted me to ask you what educational value do you think this film might have to our youth, when I say youth generally, youth specifically, black youth? Well, first of all, um, there are some people here who actually um, made this happen today, made me come here, and I'm very grateful to them. Who are those people? Are they here in the audience? Can they stand up? They wrote a letter. Jeremiah, where are you? Stand up, Jeremiah. All right. Well, well, I just wanted to say, I mean... Where is Jeremiah? I just want to say congratulations. I mean, thank you very much for doing that. That's amazing. And it just shows you what you could do when we, you know, do something, yes. rather than sit down. And uh, for me, this movie... Thank you. My, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm here because of you. So thank you. Um, is when we actually do something. I mean, for me, the movie is not, it's not about... It's not a passive movie. It's about, you know, in some ways a call to action. And it's... It, you know, it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't. Have, it, it, it could be small. It could just be about helping out a friend. That's when I wanted the movie to sort of people to walk away from the from the cinema with um, a sense of that they actually can do something to change something. Um, as far as um, educational, I mean, basically, this is a, this is just it. What I want to happen is I want the book to be on a national curriculum here in the United States and in Europe. That's what we're working on. Um, you know, I imagine, well, in Europe, it, it's a sort of, it, you know, it's in the national curriculum to read Anne Frank's diary, and I live in Amsterdam. When I first read the book, 12 Years a Slave, it, it read to me like uh, you know, American Anne Frank, uh, American's Anne Frank's diary. And I couldn't believe that I had not heard this book. Um, you know, the story goes, you've heard it all before, I imagine, um, but I, I was interested in making a film about slavery, my inn was, I had an idea of a free man from the north who gets kidnapped into slavery and is sort of dragged through the whole maze of slavery and asks the audience to travel with him as he tries to work his way out of getting back home. Um, I was having difficulty with that and my wife said to me, as a historian, why don't you look into real account of slavery? Uh, obviously. Um, and we did that and she came up with the book 12 Years a Slave. She found this book, and as what I had it in my hands, I just couldn't believe it. First, I felt very stupid and very upset with myself that I hadn't read the book before, but then slowly I realized no one I knew knew, knew the book, and I found it incredible, amazing. Um, that's why I wanted to make the film, and that, that was my passion. It's a good answer, for, for me anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> I do my best. I want to... Uh, you, you touched several themes that I've never seen, and, uh, and um, 
and uh, what might be called a, a, a movie made for the critical masses. <laughs> um, you touched on two, I think, fundamental things that is a, a story within the larger story, two stories. And one is the system of concubinage of the kept black woman. You know, we all know about Sally Hemings, and we all know, all know Jefferson and so forth. Uh, you know, those women who were kept by the master and not treated quite like uh, what would treat like Patsy. That was a crazy thing with Patsy, the love-hate thing around sex. And you brought that kind of to the fore sexuality, uh, interracial sexuality, which people, Americans, are so lost on this question. They think that's new, you know, uh, <laughs> you know in the post-racial society. You know, it's one of the oldest American stories, is a super-exploitation of black women. You might want to com comment on that. Why, why is that there? Oh, I'm sorry, I was you lost in your... Question. So, what, 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 the question yeah. is, why is that well, out yeah, there? How did you incorporate that? You know, what, what caused you to put that in there? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> well, in, in, sorry. In the book, um, Mrs. Shaw, who is the plantation, uh, the, the wife of the plantation master, I think it's one, one, it's one line description of her. And I, I was working with John Bradley on the script. I said, John, we need this woman to have a voice. She's, I've never seen this woman, this character in cinema before. Um, and we need this woman to have a voice. And we spoke about it and the whole idea of tea on a veranda, which is very English. I thought that could be a good, good setting. And John went about writing that scene and he did it. And it and that, you know, for me, that's the best thing he did on the script. It was, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, so by bringing Miss Shaw to the fore, bringing her to the foreground, I just wanted to sort of understand uh, that that woman, that character. It was just it's just fascinating. I mean, I imagine the highlight of her of her week was Patsy coming to tea on Sunday on the day was it, people, slaves were free to roam. Because could you imagine she would have had no one coming for tea other than her? She would have been ostracized, completely ostracized. Um, and of course, that's the other thing that we, we could go into is the whole idea of Epps. And I have a huge sympathy for the character of, 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 of Mr. Epps. I mean, I see myself as Solomon, and I see myself as Epps in a kind of strange way. Because Epps is passionately in love with Patsy, passionately in love with her. Look, you know, not to say that he's not a racist or a mad. want to be. <laughs> Precisely, but love is, this is the wonderful thing about love. Love, you don't choose love. Love, love chooses you. You know, who you, who, you, who you fall in love with, love chooses you. You know, and that's the one interesting thing about that boundaries and those barriers, those, those segregated areas that are crossed because of us being human beings. Now, regardless of who we try to, to make our, ourselves out to be, we are human beings, like it or not. And I think he, he tries to destroy that love through, through violence. Yeah, well, that's an interesting character. I read it a little different. I think he was, uh, he was in conflict with himself he didn't want to be, I think this was... I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah, okay, it's lust in part, yeah. There's a lot of lust there, and uh, I want, want to say that my reading of American history, which reads differently from Tom Brokaw, you know, but I'm just saying, is that's a big story that people need to know more about, particularly the people who are interested in, in, in saying they kind of try to, trying to solve the so-called race question. That's one that must be dealt with, I think, the, the super duper exploitation of black women, which reflects itself in, in the world today. Um, the other thing, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing is uh, religion, you brought the role of religion in slavery. How did that come about? What, what did you? I think you should answer this. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, you know, as religion is, is, is deemed today, um, you know, it's used for hope, but then also it's used in the way uh, of, uh, how I say, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a very interesting I mean, topic as far as, 
I mean, Christianity or is Islam or whatever. I mean, it's one uses it in the way to whoever's advantage, and uh, you know, it's constructive, constructive or destructive. I mean, it's kind of kind of straightforward. I mean, I always thought the film when I when I first read the book is it as, as being almost like um, something from uh, uh, science fiction, because. Imagine landing on this earth, and this is a book called the Bible, and people interpret the book differently, and these people who are slaves, other people aren't slaves. I mean, it's totally surreal, but it actually happened. Yeah. So that, that was fascinating for me. Yeah, I think uh, we're on the same page. I think Christianity is a, a double-edged sword in the history uh, of the West, period. <laughs> America's a part of the West. How uh, religion and, and black people's story has always been uh, inseparable from the struggle for freedom you know the Jordan River and that kind of stuff and um, it must be a thousand spirituals that we sang until very recently you know that speaks to you know we are ch climbing Jacob's ladder every rung goes higher and higher and Ezekiel saw the wheel way in the middle of the air uh, you know go way down in Egypt land, uh, tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. All those are about freedom, I mean freedom, and they re-emerged in the Civil Rights Movement. They helped the Civil Rights Movement along. Uh, uh, it was the uh, uh, unifying force, the music created by slaves, the Civil Rights Movement. It's no accident that We Shall Overcome became the theme of that. Somebody has the hand up. Uh, who wants to say something? You want to, you, know, you got a question. Okay. Go ahead, stand up and ask it. I don't know if they can hear it in the back, but I'll repeat it. Um, I'm just wondering, because I interact with a lot of... Just two seconds. Can someone give this lady the microphone, please? Someone from this yeah. working here? Please give the microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I interact every day just in the course of my life with a lot of young people, millennials and kind of hip hop generation and you know with the swag and the sag and, and I just want to know if you've had an opportunity to hear any feedback from people of this generation and of this, you know, this, this, of that generation and how the film has affected them, um, you know, positively or negatively. Have they, have you heard feedback from, from this group, from that group? Well, frankly, no. Um, and um, why that is, I don't know. Um, it's just one of those things where I, that's the next step, I, su I suppose, and trying to sort of, I mean, are people going to see it? Are, are those guys going to see it? I don't know if they are or, or they're not. If they're, you know, again, it's one of those things that, you know, from these people bringing me here to this comment today um, is, is another thing that we, what, when, what we need to do, uh, possibly organize that. I don't know. And, you know, if, if people have seen it or talking about it, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't think it's gotten around, uh, has it? Yeah. 